Well, now we're in the backyard. And boy, we got spread today. I don't need to tell you. No, ma'am, you're fine. Hey, you don't get this fat belly sticking out over here. Get <laughs> 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 me head on. Huh. <laughs> Still here today preaching the gospel. 
And that says something to me. You know, King David messed up his future when he when he seen a woman bathing on her roof. The woman had no right. She she didn't need to be taking a shower on her roof in the first place. Right. That needs to be done in the bathroom, not on your roof. Right. And so and her name's Bathsheba of all things. She's bathing <laughs> on the roof, you know. And, uh, so she did it on purpose. Oh, don't, well, she you would have to do it on purpose. It wasn't an accident. And so king, the king fell into it, you know. He got caught by that she trap. Wears. And he, he sent his man to go get baby. the woman, and the woman brings him. And they go through this thing, and she has a baby, and he kills her husband, and he messed up his future. He messed up his future. But you know what? God turned around and said, this is a man after my own heart. And, and, and blessed him anyway. And could you imagine, think about the uh, politicians and the things that, that we see in today's time where, where politicians, if you will, mess up their future. And it's very hard to get it back. For example, preachers mess up their future. They never get it back, hardly. How can God take something that we messed up, turn it around, bless it, and give it to us. Could you imagine? So let's just, you, you want to hear about what your future is? Yes, yes. God says this. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Yes. Now, he says, I know the thoughts that I think. The word thoughts means plans. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. In Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the plans. So he doesn't say, you know the plans. We don't know the plan. Joseph knew the plan and messed it up and spent, what, 17 years in prison for something he didn't do? Because he knew the plan. Ran his mouth, messed it up. Throwed in a hole, sold for slavery, throwed in prison. But he still became the president of... Or the leader of the world. <laughs> he messed up his plan his whole life. But one day when he said this. The, the man came down to him and said. Uh, it's, you got to go to Pharaoh. And it says that they shaved him and, and gave him new clothes. So he had given up. Before he was keeping tight and right. But he came to a place where he just gave up. And they shaved him and changed his clothes and they brought him before Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh says, I heard about you, son. I heard you got a gift. I heard you could tell dreams. He said this. He says, I can't do nothing except that comes from God above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm See? talking about. He, he learned humility. All of a sudden, he ain't gifted no more. All of a sudden, he's not a dreamer. All of a sudden, he isn't this anointed man. All of a sudden, he's like, hey. It's not me. It's the Lord God Almighty. He is the revealer of secrets. He is the one. If he chooses to speak yeah, through me to you, that's where it's going to come from. It is not coming from yes. me. There is a God in heaven who will reveal the secrets. And, he, and the man gave him an opportunity. And he got breakthrough for the whole world. And we still talk about that today. Can I, excuse me, can I say something? Sure. There's times, you know, like... I'm saying, for instance, I don't know if this is going to, like, help every, anybody out here, but I'm a single woman. And there's times I'm, like, by myself going, oh, God, I'm in pain, I'm hurting, I, you know what I mean? And he goes, you know what I want you to do? He talks to me, and he goes, I want you to be still. I want you to speak to me. I want you to be in my presence. You know, and, and, and totally what he's saying right now is like speaking to me. It, it happens all the time. Amen. It's like, you know, we get so busy. People get so busy in life. You know, but I don't know if it's like job related or, you know, recycling or, you know, anything. But we get so busy in life that we don't have time for him. And we need and, to make time, right? Yeah, and it's like, oh, God, help me, help me. Well, you know what? I'm not calling on you when I really need you. You know? I'm calling on you, and he goes, you know what? And he speaks to me and tells me, look, this is our quiet moment. Our quiet moment. We 
we need to spend time together. You call on me, like, you know, it's like that song. Hey, June, Jesus. You call on my name, wherever you are, and, you know, I'll come yeah. running. You Psalm, know, he's like that. Let me read this. Psalm 139, verse 17 says, to go with what you're saying, sister, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more numerous than the sand. If I should count the thoughts of God toward me, precious thoughts, it's more numerous than the sand. Let's see here. Hang on, here's one grain. There's one grain, two... We got a long way to go, don't we? Yes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have a long way to go, huh? God's precious thoughts toward us are more numerous than the sand on the seashore on the whole earth. Not a handful. That's magnificent. That's too much for me to even almost handle. How can somebody love me that much and think about me and precious thoughts that much? That's, that's our God. That's who we serve. He loves us. You cannot count. You cannot measure the magnitude of His love. Our love is evil compared to God's love. The best love we can do is evil compared to God's love. God says if you have a child and he wants some bread, you're not going to give him a rock, are you? Of no. course not. Of course not. He said my love is more greater than that. If your love is evil... How much greater is my love? So God's love, it's unmeasurable. And his thoughts are unmeasurable. And so he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, and the reason I'm reading this scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, because this is what he spoke to me this week. He, he, he said this, he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans of peace. Number one, peace. You can be, you can have a hundred billion dollars and not have peace and That's be miserable. That's what Amanda always says to me. Peace. peace. <laughs> so God's plan for us is peace. He says this, not of evil, not of evil, not of harm, not of calamity, not of disaster. My plans for you are of peace. They are of good. They are not of disaster. They are not of evil. They are not for calamity. It is plans of goodness, prosperity, peace, health, the kingdom of God, the inheritance of the Father, join heirs with Christ Jesus. There is no harm, no hatred, no evil in God's plans for us. Would you have a child and then plan evil for that child? Heck no. Heck no. There's no way. So... If we're not going to do that for our own child, how much more is God going to bless us? So he, he creates us, and then he has a blueprint, a plan for our life that's laid out. He says, I created you, and I have a plan for you. I have a future for you. A future. A future. He says, here's my second part of my plan. The third part, actually, is first is thoughts of peace. Second, no evil. Third, to give you a future. Number four, and a hope. A future and a hope. Mm -hmm. That's right. A future. To give you a future. To give you a future. When God spoke to me this week and he says, Son, I want to give you a future. The first thought that come through me, through my spirit was, I don't have to work for it by the sweat of my brow. Oh. You know, thank God we have oh. that. Thank God we have that. Fear. I'm a 51 year old man. God's telling me at 51 years old, you're, I'm going to give you a future. Why didn't you tell me that when I was 18? Why wait till I'm a half a century to tell me finally? I've been searching for a future my whole life. Huh? I've traveled all over the world, hitchhiked all over the United States, uh. slept under every bridge in Jacksonville, Florida, looking for. <laughs>
Something to hold on to. Something to believe in. Something to grab a hold on. A future I needed. A future so bad. I was thrown into this world for parents, poverty, hatred, meanness, fighting, bickering, no future, no hope at all. Did not was not raised in a church, did not know God. I couldn't stand Christians because I knew that God was for them and he hated me. And the light that was on them hit the evil that was in me and it caused me to just be mean toward them. In my mind, never ever, never ever out of my mouth, but just in my mind, you know. But I knew, I knew I wanted to be one. I knew I needed that peace that they like had. Angry. I knew I needed to be a child of God, but I didn't know how. I know, I know. I had no idea how. I didn't know a Holy Ghost. Never heard of a Holy Ghost. Jesus, yes. hey, I, who is that? Come on. And then one day, all of a sudden, things yes. begin to change and the future right. begin to develop. And, and I searched harder and harder and harder and, and finally gave up and said, I'll never have a future. 50 years old, <laughs> never happen. It'll never happen. I'm destined to struggle every week. I'm destined to struggle to pay rent for the rest of my life. Destined to struggle just to get food and pay the bills. That's my lot in life. And I gave up, like Joseph did. I said, hey, whatever. Then all of a sudden, at that moment, mm -hmm. when we give up mm -hmm. and we, and we can't up. do anything, and we just say, God, I need your mercy. When we're so scared. I need your grace. Oh, I have to lean on your grace and your mercy because I cannot do it myself. I've tried my whole life and gotten nowhere. And all of a sudden, it's at that moment he steps in and he says, Now you're ready for your future. Moses was 80 years old before he was ready for his future. He was raised in a castle and killed a man, and threw his blessing away and lived on the streets for 40 years. Yeah. Uh, he was homeless for 40 years. He walked away from wealth, a castle, everything he wanted, and lived homeless for 40 years in the desert, That's in the right sand. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. And look here, when he gave up at the end of 40 years, he's just like, that's it. I'm, I have messed up my future. I have no hope, no future, no life. I'm an 80-year-old man. I'm fixing to die. And all of a sudden, God steps in in a flame of fire and says, Moses, take your shoes off because you're right. standing on holy Get ground. Get up. Woo! Get and up. what does he do? Moses, God says, I called you to deliver People deliver mighty names of Moses. What does he do? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> God! I stood the. Can't speak. Can't speak. Can't speak. Because I stuttered. Moses stuttered. Could you imagine? Being the leader of the world and going, hey, hey, God, God, this is Joseph sent me to hell. Incapability. 
ability is God is capable. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Whoa, 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 whoa. God, 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 I drink too much. You can't, can't use me. Oh, yes, I can. Do you see what I do behind closed doors? You can't use me. I'm not worthy. I can use you. I ain't worthy to unloose your sandals, Master. He said, that's right. That's who I'm looking for. It's somebody who knows they ain't worthy to touch my sandals. Because <coughs> if we won't touch God's sandals, we won't touch his people. We won't hurt his people. So he's looking for weak vessels. He ain't looking for strong ones. There is not a strong vessel in God's army. We're all weak. We chose the weakest and the least of everybody. Because we need it. We need them. So God says, I know the plans that I have for you. You're a father. Do you have plans for your children? Who knows them? You know them. I don't know your plans for your children, do I? You know them, correct? Yes, sir. See how that works? Here's a father. He knows the plans he has for his children. Do you know the thoughts he has for your children? Good man. Yeah, he knows the thoughts he has to his children. We don't know it, do we? God, we are the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your, right now, Thank you for your presence right now, Lord. Thank you for your presence, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just let that soak in. Thank, Thank you, Jesus Christ. Yes. Christ. We know that this man's plans for his children was to bring him to church today, don't we? Yes, sir. Because we know he had to think it. He had to think it, and he planned it, and he did it. Yes, and it's blessing all of us. Yes, we sir. need the children here, don't yes, sir. we? Huh. See? And yes, God sir. says, did we know we needed children this morning? No. Did God know we needed children? Yes. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're thoughts of peace. They're thoughts of good. It's not to harm you. It's not to destroy you. And it's not to bring calamity. It's to prosper you and bless you. If we don't become like little children, we will not see the kingdom of God. And exactly. Thank you, Roy. We ex that's exactly right. We have to be as children. Exactly right. To give you a future. What? What? What does, I'm like, okay, what does that mean to give me a future? What, what does that mean? Family. A future. It is, the future is, <clears throat> what is left to come. It is tomorrow. It is this afternoon. Your future is now. Jesus had a situation where he is in John, the book of John chapter 2, he's at a, a, a wedding feast. And his mama says, son, they ran out of wine. He says, he says, it's not my time, mother. And she said, do something about it. And he told, she told the people, she said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Jesus' mother, even though Jesus said, my future is not here, Jesus' mother told him to reach into the future and pull it into the present. And he did. He reached into the future. It wasn't his time yet to show that kind of power. But his mama said, the need is here. And she told him she reached into his future and pulled it into the present and the water turned into wine. Hallelujah. And he said, it's not my time. She said, yes, it is. I'm your mother. Do what I say. He you know what he said? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is your time. Your time is now. Reach into your future and pull it to you. And walk in it. Our future is the choices we make. We need to make wise choices. 
Most of us, we understand and know how to make unwise choices, but how do you make a wise choice? Like Sister Cindy was saying, we have to be patient and wait on God and sit in that still place, and we can make wise choices. Right. Our future is, is the days we have, what days we have left to look forward to. If you're born on this earth and God's good to you and gives you 100 years to live, you get 36,500 days to live. 700,000 hours. What are we doing with them? 700,000 hours, 36,500 days. Wasting That's our it. time. That's it. I'm 50 years old. If God's good to me, lets me live to be 100. I've got about 15, 16,000 days left to do something with my future. That's not much. No. 15,000 days is not much to do something with my future. I already have 15,000. That's right. 